Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 88. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook, YouTubers Love Excel 87 to 92. Hey, in this uh, number 88, our goal is we have a data set here, and we want to delete the rows whenever there's a blank in column A. Now, just a moment ago in YouTubers Love Excel 87, we did it by hand. But here we want to do it um, by hand once while recording a macro. And then we'll be able to um, just use a keyboard shortcut and repeat this. This YouTuber said he had lots of sheets of this data. And he didn't want to go through by hand and have to delete them all. <coughs> what is a macro? A macro is just code in Excel. There's actually a... a a window behind the scenes where you can type code. Now, for those of us that don't know how to type code very well, there's an actual macro recorder. And what is it? It's a tape recorder. As you do things like click in cells and add formulas and delete, it will actually write the code for you. So now we want to do our, our um, tricks to highlight the whole column and then delete all the rows, just like we did in uh, YouTubers number 87. But we're going to use this. Uh, macro recorder. Now in 2003, you have to go to the Tools menu and then Macros and Record. In 2007, uh-oh, you have to have the Developer ribbon. How do you uh, uh, show this Developer ribbon? Well, you have to go to the Orb and then down at the bottom there's Excel Options. And it, you can't see it right there, but it, click on the Orb and it's Excel Options right there. Uh, but there's a keyboard shortcut to get to the Options. It's Alt, Alt, F, I, Alt, F, I. And sure enough, under Excel Options, under Popular, there it is, Show Developer tab in Ribbon. And then click the OK at the bottom, and you'll see it here. In 2007, you can go right there. And there's the record in the code group. But there's actually uh, a, a button uh, right here on the status bar down here that allows you to record a macro. Now, before we record this macro, we want to talk about there's two types. There's a absolute and a relative macro. And by the way, all the notes for this 88 are right here. There's a lot of them, and I didn't want to have them on the sheet because we're going to be deleting rows. Um, and again, if you click through this workbook, you can see I have a bunch of um, sheets. Once we record our macro, we have to go test it so we'll see if it works. Now, before we, uh, so a absolute macro means when you turn on the, uh, the recorder, the code, when you click in cell A1, forget it. In the code, it says click on cell A1. If it's a relative macro, if your cursor's right here and you click here, it's recording, please go one, two, three below. So if you were to run that code and your cursor was here, it would go one, two, three below. So relative and absolute, just like cell references. Now, one other thing before we record this macro. If we were to, uh, we want to highlight this whole first column of data. And if you use your scroll bar to go all the way down, you see there's 700. But what if there wasn't 700? If we were to, in our macro, click right here, if we had an absolute cell reference, it would say click on cell A700, which is not what we want because there could be different numbers of rows. Well, there's a cool trick. It's an, a concept in Excel. It's called current range. Click in cell A1, and I'll demonstrate this concept, current range. We're going to use the keyboard shortcut to go to the bottom of the current range. Control down arrow. Hey, look what it did. It just went to the bottom until it ran into a blank. Now control down arrow again. It jumps to the top. If I control down arrow, so current range is go down all the way bottom until you run into a blank. Now, this YouTuber said the, d the data was filled in everywhere except for column A. That was going to be the trigger for us to delete rows. Well, since we need to get to the bottom, let's click in D1 and see what happens if we hit Control Down Arrow. Control Down Arrow is the keyboard shortcut for go to the bottom of current range. No way. It goes down to the bottom. And it would go wherever. If this was only 690 row, one rows, it would have stopped right there. I'm going to Control Home to get back up to A1. So that's how we'll trick our macro recorder by using current range to move around. Now, uh, let's click anywhere. I'm going to start in E4, and we're going to turn on our macro uh, recorder. Remember, in 2007, 
Now there's a button right here. I'm going to click on this, and we have to name our macro. Now I'm going to name it something like, uh, I won't forget. So when I look at it later, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it is. And then we can create a keyboard shortcut, which is what we want to do, because we're, we're going to have to run this like on 10 sheets. Now you could just hit R, but that would be Control R. If you hold Shift before you hit the R, then you can have Control Shift R. Control R is like, I never use that keyboard shortcut, but I think it's like fill right or something. Uh, now, so we have our keyboard shortcut workbook. We want to keep it in this workbook because we're only going to run it in this workbook. You could choose personal. It's a hidden workbook. Um, and that means you could use it in any workbook that you open on your computer. I'm going to say this workbook. Now I'm going to type a description. De I'm leaving a trail here. So if I come back later, I can, I can figure out what this macro means. And that is a smart macro or even code writing procedure. All right, we're going to click OK. When you click OK, it's recording. Even if you make a mistake, it's going to record it. Now notice down here in the status bar, that turns to a stop button. If you were to go to the developer, that stop button now, that stop button in 2003 pops up on the stop recording toolbar when you start the, the macro. If it doesn't, then you have to stop and re-record your macro and go to uh, uh, view, toolbars, custom, and then show your stop recording. And by the way, I always have notes, and there's notes for that. All right, uh, now we haven't done anything yet because we just were showing ribbons. Let's start our macro. Notice I'm here. If I click in D1, we're doing an absolute uh, macro here. And under the developer, you can see that button right there. If, it were, if we were to click it, it would record a relative. But right now, it's not clicked. It's not orange, so that means it's an absolute. That button right there is on the uh, stop recording toolbar in 2003. Now, when we were recording the absolute macro, so when we just clicked in D1 in the code behind the scene, it says select D1. Now, let's use our keyboard shortcut to trick it, even though we're in absolute mode. Control down arrow. That just got recorded in the code. Hey, go to the bottom of the current selection. Now, I'm going to use that same keyboard shortcut, but I want to go this way. Now, there could be a blank there. So I'm going to control, uh, control arrow over, and then control arrow over again uh, to make sure that that uh, got recorded, just in case there was a blank there. Now, there's a keyboard shortcut that will get us all the way up to the top. If we were to control shift and up arrow, it would only highlight up to there. But instead of control shift up arrow, if we use the home key, control shift home will get us all the way to the top, control shift home. And that's a way from clicking here, control down arrow, control arrow arrow, and then control shift up arrow to highlight that first column even though we're in absolute mode. Now we're going to use our go to blanks to select these blanks. Hit the F5 key, that's go to. And then sure enough, special, that's a uh, button that allows us to do not go to a cell reference, but something special like blank. So I click on blanks and then click OK. Sure enough, it's highlighting all of them. Now very carefully right click. If you right click somewhere else, it'll unselect them. If you right click right there, you can also use your right click key, which if you find your control button on the right side of your keyboard, uh, right to the left of that is the right click key, right click. And then look at that, delete. You could click on it with your mouse, or you could hit the D. See the D is underlined? And then to get to entire row, you could click on that, or see that R, it's underlined, so I'll hit R. And you could click on that button with your um, mouse, but since it's blue right there, that means it's ready, and you can hit Enter. Now I'm going to control home to get back up to A1. And sure enough, just like that, we've recorded our macro. Don't forget to click Stop. Now before we go test it over here, I want to go and look at what got recorded. Alt F8 is the keyboard shortcut. You got to hold Alt and then hit F8. And sure enough, there's our macro. If we want to change the options, you could click there. If you wanted to read the code, you could click here, Edit, and you could actually look. And notice it. here's our uh, control uh, selection.end. That's not selecting any cell. Here it's a D1, but here's the code that will get our table correct. And you can look through the rest of that uh, code if you want. I'm going to close this VBA uh, window here. 
And now let's go try it. I'm going to click on 88.2 uh, here, and then Control-Shift-R. Just like that, it deleted all of them. Let's try it here, Control-Shift-R. You can even go down to the bottom, uh, clicking column A and control down arrow, and sure enough, it got it. So that's how to delete a bunch of rows with a macro. See you next trick.